future of VR is looking really bright if you judge by our time at CES 2023. I got to try haptic gloves that let me feel something as subtle as a spider walking across my hand, all the way up to hard stopping my fingers from being able to squeeze something that was a physical object. A shirt that caused me actual pain when I would get shot, and some of the most modern and even future VR headsets. Let's talk about it. So I gotta say a huge thank you to Abaca. They sent our team to CES actually so we could meet them, see what they've got coming up and just to hang out, have some fun there. Probably one of the things that was the most exciting to me to get to try because I've seen them before and I've always wanted to try a set. Haptics Gloves. And that's a brand name, not just Haptic Gloves. <laughs> HaptX had their gloves there that your hands fit into. They have an exoskeleton over your fingers providing some actual resistance when you go to pick up a physical object. So if you were to pick up a rock in your hand when you try to squeeze, those exoskeletons and fingers actually stop you from being able to squeeze, which simulates the feeling of having something in your hand. But also, they have haptics along your fingertips so that if you were to put your hand under a running faucet, you would feel that water tickle in your hand. You could feel this little fox in your hand that you were holding, trotting around. <laughs> Oh no! Just absolutely mind blowing for me. As someone who's been in VR forever and you always are just used to your hand going through the table or hand going through an object. Oh, so you even feel wind in that. The first time I touched the sunflowers in that demo and felt them touch back, it was mind blowing. Got me more excited than I've been about anything new for VR in quite a while. Oh wow, oh wow. All of your oh wow. Jobs. Jump over to the OWO booth where they've got the shirt that has a TENS unit basically built into it. There's a full video, so I'll leave a link up here in case you really wanna learn more about that. But basically I had this thing set to 40 out of 80 on the electricity it was using to simulate when I got shot or stabbed. Ah, God. Ugh. It, even at 40, was painful. You could actually get hurt by this shirt. What's the max level? Is it 50? 80. 80? 80. Oh, God. It goes to 80? Yeah. Now, for those of you walking into this fresh and you're like, oh, I've never heard of CES or I don't really know what it's like, Consumer Electronics Show happens in Vegas each year. And if you're like, well, where in Vegas? That's a great question, because we couldn't freaking figure it out. It doesn't just happen at the Las Vegas Convention Center. It's so big that it's spread out between there, hotels in the city, other locations. I mean, you're talking miles that it spans. This is not something, if your first time you're about to go to CES and you're checking out videos to learn about it, it's not gonna be super easy to get from place to place. You're gonna be taking cabs, hopping on their monorail, maybe taking their Tesla tunnel, and seeing all these different things because it's hard to imagine and comprehend how big it is until you're there and you see it. John and I did over 30,000 steps one day just trying to get from place to place, and we didn't even walk through town. We even like took some cabs and monorails those days. It's massive. The main attraction I wanted to see there, of course, PSVR 2. It's coming out next month, got to check it out. Full video, I'll leave that up here too, but I was impressed. Really, really good graphics, the new headset haptics they put on. It wasn't without a few little glitches I covered in the full video, of course. Overall, I had already pre-ordered the PSVR 2, and I have zero regrets about that. I can't wait for it to get here and go even further into it. Pimax was there. If you don't know who Pimax is, they're kind of considered like one of the top end, even enthusiast might be too small of a word, like VR obsessed people. You're talking thousands and thousands of dollars for some of their headset. Got to try their new crystal headset that they said had no screen door effect, some of the best graphics. Fortunately, the PC they had it paired to was a little glitchy. They had to restart a couple times. Half-Life Alex textures kept dropping out on us. Should I just reload myself? I, the textures are missing. But as far as the actual screen graphical resolution, it was good. I could still find the screen door effect if I really looked for it, but probably the clearest display I've ever seen in a VR headset. It's definitely, it's very slight. You have to look for it. But on a white screen, you can see it if you really look. Around the edges of the lenses, you get a tiny bit of distortion and darkening. And there is a slight bit of Mira. As you turn your head toward a sky scene, you'd see it. But in normal gameplay, you wouldn't really notice it. It's cool to see that we're advancing and that hopefully soon screen door effect won't even be a term anyone will know what it is anymore. Panasonic, Shift Tall, their Megan X, whoever's made the headset, they had it there on demo. It's a Steam VR headset. Their advertising is going to have some of the most high resolution screens ever. It's going to be super lightweight. I only got to try one of them that they had. It was just set to pass through to show you the quality of the pass through. Probably the clearest color pass through I've ever seen on a headset. That said, it was a smaller square. It wasn't the full immersive view of everything. It was a smaller square out in front of me and it was running at like four frames a second. The experience was so rough. Like when I turned my head, it was like duh, 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 to catch up. It was painful and the thing was so uncomfortable like it was light but all of the weight was on the bridge of my nose like all, every bit of it was right there 
That was terribly uncomfortable. Interesting, but horrible. CES, there's so much going on. There's so much Wi-Fi, Bluetooth interference, and not only that, but all these companies had to show up and set up their tech that a lot of times you get a demo and it's like, oh, I hope this isn't the final product yet. I hope something better is gonna come out in the end because that was a rough experience, but it was cool to see that screen. The resolution was so good that it was almost like you were just looking through glasses, seeing the real world. That impressed me, but the frame rate made me feel terrible. And it was one of the most uncomfortable things I tried at the entire convention on my face. It felt just terrible. Jump over to the Magic Leap 2 AR headset. I'd never gotten my eyes in a set of these before, and that was quite the experience. So unlike a Quest Pro where you're seeing through cameras to see the world, it's more like a Microsoft HoloLens. You're looking through actual clear screens, almost like sunglasses. And then it's mapping out your environment itself. It's projecting holograms from there. It was cool, but at a convention, there's tons of people, there's tons going on. You know, I was seeing people everywhere while I was trying to try this demo, but then they showed me there's this mode that you press and it darkens up the surroundings. So even though you're looking through, it's clear, it diffuses all the light from the people around you. So they just become like these dark shadows and your hologram suddenly becomes the center of your focus that you're working on. Yeah, it's really interesting. What happens is like right now I can see through, it's like it's a pair of sunglasses, but if I hit the dimming button, all of a sudden everything except what I'm looking at goes almost dark. So I can still kind of see the people around me. If, the, if someone came up to me, I wouldn't bump into them because I could just barely see, but it's really dark. It like really makes you immersed in what you're looking at and forget the world around you where right now I can see everything perfectly. It's really interesting how that works. I didn't know that was a thing. It's nice because I've used a Quest Pro and it's trying to recreate it and it does a decent job, but this you're just looking through glasses. So it feels like it's just a real world with holograms in it. So it's almost like a more immersive focus mode, yet it's not fully blocking out your surroundings either. The Magic Leap was pretty cool to see and the hand tracking on it, I could see my skeletal fingers the whole time. It was really responsive and keeping up with me. And as someone who's tried a HoloLens one, but not a two, the Magic Leap definitely seemed leaps and bounds ahead no pun intended, with how good the AR experience was on it. Ajna Lens was there. They were ones that were excited. They wanted us to come over, have a full demo. They've got their own headset. It's still in development. Wasn't the most comfortable thing I've ever put on my head, but they're still working on it. It was very lightweight. I was surprised about that. So it's only 390 grams, 390. and it's it's lighter than the lightest in its segment, right? It has got the highest and the brightest display uh, in its segment. It's 5K resolution. 2.5K per eye. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to change work training. So unlike other training in VR, a lot of times you still end up holding the stock controllers. So like if you're painting an automobile, you're using the controller. They're trying to take any tool you have and they can set it up with a sensor and you use the actual tool. So for instance, we had a spray handle like you'd use to spray paint an automobile or furniture using that actual handle. So you're feeling the real thing in your hand with their controller attached to the top. For training, you're getting the real sensation of using what you're actually gonna be using in the long run. And they said it could be anything. They could attach them to one to a socket wrench or something if they wanted to. So really trying to change the corporate side with training, immersion. And it's cool to see that too because you see so much at CES that's not just gaming, it's really trying to take everything with VR and AR to the mainstream everywhere. Speaking of that, the footprint of the metaverse gaming XR space was a big part of Central Hall, and yet it still didn't encompass nearly everything. You know, Sony was way off in their own huge booth. Panasonic had their own area. There was all kinds of things still spread out. Some of the companies like Kiwi and Abaco were over at the Venetian Hall. You're seeing that all of the XR, VR, whatever you want to call it space, isn't just contained anymore. It's spreading out into all of the tech, which is really awesome to see for the future. There's a social app metaverse future. I, I had never heard of it. Somnium VR. They're trying to be really open source, let everyone in. It's not going to be its own ecosystem like other ones. I hadn't heard of it, but they were there. The CEO, virtually, he was hanging out in the metaverse space, basically, with a bunch of people chatting. And then he came over and we did a little interview face to face, which was really cool to see because a lot of times these companies that believe in the metaverse or believe in their space aren't even using it. To see that someone believed in it that much, that they attended this convention through it, that was cool. And then we got to go try one of the most expensive VR headsets in existence and try it in a helicopter simulator, which was really cool. Your hotas was in front of you, but then you had your throttle, you had your pitch, all kinds of stuff. It was like flying a real helicopter, which was wild. Can I crash it on purpose? Yeah, if you want to let's, let's, let's see what happens. You also try landing it. Oh, I could. Oh, I think it's, it might be too late for that. Yeah, you can. Oh! <laughs> 
and he showed me he didn't even have all of the devices out, but that actually was all part of this big crate that you could have your flight sim stuff in. It'd break down and you'd close the crate and like wheel it into a closet. So for people who have these huge rooms at home with all this space for their flight sim equipment, this was something that could actually break down really easily, go in the closet and come out when you wanted to game with it, which is wild because those rigs usually take up so much space, so much money. It was cool to see something like that and to get to test it. And then right next to that, what attracted some of the biggest crowds, actually everybody was just over there just staring in awe. There was this holographic setup and it looked like the way it was working, there was a whole bunch of fans. So when fans are spinning, you know how you can't really see the blade anymore. It was using laser projectors onto those to then make these shapes because the fan actually has depth to it. The holographics seem to have depth to them as well. So like this bird that you'd see up there looked like this realistic hologram of a bird. It was really cool. Tons of people were just standing there in awe. I wanted to get over and talk to them and learn more about it, but there was such a crowd we never could get close to it. Of course, the Vive XR got announced there. They were off site at another hotel doing private little demos. We didn't get to demo it. We heard all about it. The news on it is out now. $1,100. It looks like it's a full on Quest Pro competitor with some features the Quest Pro doesn't have. You can get see more about that on the channel, but I'm really excited. And the reaction from a lot of people who got to actually try it was really positive. So that's really promising that maybe HTC is going to come back around and kind of be more known in the VR space. We got to go drive through the Tesla tunnel, which I had no idea what to expect. It's kind of a proof of concept that gets you around the convention center because it's so big. Whole fleets of Teslas. I thought they'd be driving without anyone in them, but they each had a driver. You hop in and they drive you to the next one. They're still controlling it. So it's definitely not the autonomous tunnel I expected. That was going to be this round tunnel and the Tesla would be flying up on the walls of it going through. But it was still cool. It was really well lit up. And we had a really fun moment where when we got out of our Tesla, one of the other Tesla drivers started yelling at us. It's like, you're the VR guy, aren't you? <laughs> I am. I am. Here. No, okay. <laughs> Good to see you, man. <laughs> it's really funny because I like ran over and said hi really quickly. He's like, he needed to drive these passengers over. So I just said hi and he ran off. But just a really funny moment that that happened of all places in the Tesla tunnel. And then we finished it off with this big VR party. Tons of different creators, huge names in the VR industry. Tons of companies were there. It was at this Ready Player One barcade where there was drinks, there was games all kinds of different gaming, played some Smash Bros with people while we were there. Even though the convention still went on for another day or two, we left the next day after that. And that was kind of the perfect ending because it was so much fun getting to meet so many creators and companies, hang out with them, see what they're like. A little more chill of a vibe, just having fun with each other. The whole trip was just absolutely amazing. So, way to eat some man meat. <laughs> That's an audio clip I'm going to use. As far as the future of VR right now, I'm feeling very excited, very confident where we're headed. And I can't wait for next year and maybe some other conventions this year. So if you have any questions about anything specific, CES or anything you want to know, hit me up in the comments. I'll do my best to answer all of them for you and leave some links to some of the other videos that went a little more in depth. But thank you so much for coming out, being here. Thanks again to Abiga who got us there because that was really cool of them. And I will see you in another reality.